Okay, so I'm going to talk uh, on the Gungano Urban Poor Fund. Uh, the Gungano Urban Poor Fund from the Zimbabwean experience. My name is George Masimba. I work uh, with Dialogue on Shelter, which is an affiliate of the SDI. The Gungano Urban Poor Fund was set up in 1998 by urban poor collectives, which are known as the Zimbabwe Homeless People's Federation. And these are grassroots collectives that are constituted into about 612 collectives at the moment, with a membership totaling about uh, 15,000 households. The, mainly the Gungana Urban Poor Fund, it was formed as a result of the need to address issues to do with financial exclusion and deepening urban poverty that was affecting mainly uh, urban poor communities living in informal settlements or slums. So essentially these communities could not afford uh, finance from your formal institutions. And also there was rising urban poverty in our country. So in order to get around this, communities under the Zimbabwe Homeless Post Federation set up their own fund, which they own and manage. So the fund, uh, addresses a number of issues, which include, for example, enabling the urban poor who are living in, in slums to access housing, uh, livelihoods, uh, undertake income generating loans, uh, uh, enable themselves to access uh, basic services such as water and sanitation uh, and energy and other uh, uh, important uh, basic services. So in terms of uh, the key features of the fund or what it aims to do, the fund is, like I said earlier, it's owned and managed by the poor. And also the, the fund uh, promotes partnerships and collaboration between the urban poor and city governments. And uh, in addition to that, the, the fund also uh, seeks to establish a financing instrument that is scalable and replicable in terms of for uh, providing basic urban services to the urban poor. And also the, the manner in which the, the fund is structured or organized enables the, uh, is, is, is such that the fund empowers the urban poor in slums by, by uh, providing them with affordable loans and also even by providing them with skills and uh, resources to undertake income, generate, in, income generating loans. And to date, the fund has managed to enable or, or to reach out to close to 15,000 households. And uh, in terms of fu funding, 804,000 US dollars has been mobilized through the, 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 the Gungano Urban Poor Fund. So how is the decision-making devolved in terms of the, the fund? The, urban, the Gungano Urban Poor Fund uh, is, is, is anchored on the grassroots collectives that are known, saving, that are known as uh, savings groups. So on the basis of these savings groups, the urban poor are able to make decisions in terms of uh, what it is they want to prioritize in their community or in their settlement, for example, it could be accessing a, a, a communal water point, it could be even construction of a communal sanitation block. So through that mechanism, the urban poor fund enables decentralized decision making by the urban poor themselves based on what they prioritize, based on the, their needs. Then uh, in addition, the fund is also uh, decision-making processes are devolved in the sense that the fund is anchored on savings groups that are women-led. Uh, so largely 90% of the membership within the federation is, is constituted by women. So these are women who are leading these savings groups. And uh, on the basis of that, women make decisions about what it is that they grapple with in their communities 
For example, it could be uh, access to water, uh, sanitation, energy issues, et cetera, all that. So it is these women who are leading savings groups in, in the various parts of the country in formal settlement that then make decisions that direct where the resources from the funds then go to. The fund is also uh, working towards enabling the urban poor in informal settlements to access a land tenure, even build incremental housing and transitional housing, and uh, make incremental improvements in, in the settlements in relation to provide provision of drainage systems and sanitation. So in terms of uh, decision making, we can say that the the Gungano Urban Poor Fund not only creates a, a financial vehicle that enables communities that are in slums to access services, but also creates a very critical space for communities to make decisions in terms of uh, providing or uh, enabling their settlements access services that are uh, in, in previously not, not there in, this, in these communities. So how and why is the uh, Gungano Urban Poor Fund uh, business unusual? In other words, how are the uh, principles of locally led adaptation reflected in the, in the way in which the fund operates? As I said earlier on, the fund's decision-making uh, arrangements are devolved. Communities that are in savings groups, in, in settlements, in informal settlements, are the ones that sit together, make decisions in terms of what it is that they are prioritizing. And based on the needs that they, they identify, they can then make decisions in terms of whether they are going to construct a, 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 a communal sanitation block, for example. And in one of the settlements where we are working, communities have been able to construct a, or a, a develop sanitation units in the form of ecological sanitation toilets, which are your dry toilets that are functioning in areas where uh, communities do not have access to water. But because of such innovations uh, by communities themselves, they are able to access sanitation. Then secondly, the Gungano Urban Poor Fund is also focusing on addressing uh, structural inequalities. That is to say, it, focus, it, is, it has been focusing on the marginalized groups, uh, women, uh, young people, and also even focusing on slums. And uh, as you are away, slums in many of the instances do not have access to, to services because they are either uh, not part of the mainstream city or they are considered as illegal. So by having a fund that is focusing on these areas that traditionally would not have accessed uh, basic services, the fund is in a way focusing on, on, on addressing structural inequalities that affect the urban poor in cities. Then thirdly, the fund also provides a flexible and readily a, and easily accessible finance. So unlike your traditional formal uh, financial institutions where it would take very long time for people to be able to access a uh, finance, assuming they even qualify to access the fund by the fact that it's located in, 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 in these local communities, in these slum settlements, it makes it easier for communities to quickly access resources. For example, in case of uh, uh, floods, people can easily access uh, resources to quickly develop their drainage systems. Whereas uh, if they were to approach formal institutions, this would take a very protracted period while people uh, suffer from the uh, uh, hazards or shocks associated with some of the climate change issues that affect informal settlements. Then fourthly, the, the fund is also, has also been key in terms of uh, developing uh, uh, enduring structures in communities, uh, which are, are also supported by us as the local NGO that is working with the, the Federation. So essentially, the fund is providing that uh, a capacity in communities in terms of how do they man manage finance. And that is very important in the sense that 
it then prepares the communities in terms of even managing the bigger loans that are associated with the infrastructure improvements that can be done in former settlements. The Gungana Urban Poor Fund has also been uh, uh, critical in terms of building robust understanding of climate risk and uncertainty in that uh, it has been anchored by uh, processes of collecting data through the enumerations that are done and spearheaded by uh, savings groups that I talked about earlier. So that provides the information about the real issues that are affecting uh, communities in these informal settlements in terms of uh, uh, the nature of the shocks, be it uh, uh, floods, be it uh, lack of water, and even strong winds that might destroy some of the uh, sharks that you find in these informal settlements. So there's uh, a lot of information or there's a lot of evidence that is built around how the fund operates in such a way that there's very sufficient and solid data that informs the decision making uh, for the fund in terms of where the resources are directed towards. Then uh, embedded in the way in which the fund operates also are George, issues. To George, please, please wrap up now. You have one minute to wrap up so that okay. we don't overrun the session. Thank you. Okay, so embedded in, in the way in which the fund, the fund also works is uh, issues to do with flexible programming and learning. Through the savings groups that I talked about earlier, communities have got very critical spaces through which they can uh, reflect and learn on how they can continuously improve and adjust in terms of the priorities for the fund. Then uh, being uh, located at the local level, the fund also has got some trans very key transparent and accountability mechanisms that are anchored or uh, rooted in the savings group that I talked about earlier. Then lastly, in terms of the collaborative action and investment, uh, the Gungana Urban Poor Fund has been very critical in terms of enabling, creating partnerships with city governments, collaborations that have been key in terms of influencing not only uh, maximizing around issues of risk, financial resources, but also influencing policies that for a very long time affect communities that are in formal settlement. Then in terms of moving forward, lastly, my, my, the key issue is about how do we increase finance based on the experience that these city funds have shown across the world in terms of the SDI affiliates, and also uh, uh, improve in terms of making sure that the policy environment enables the poor to be able to bring in these services that I have talked about. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you so, so much, George. A quick follow-up question. Um, if you are to advise global climate funds and donors, what would you wish to change to shift more climate finance via a funding mechanism like yours? I think uh, what, what is very key is for global donors to uh, invest in these structures that have demonstrated capacity in terms of delivering solutions in, in informal settlements. So these, while at least we have done a lot in terms of uh, the experiences from the fund, this is not addressing the magnitude of the challenges that the urban poor are facing in cities. So there is need to augment uh, provide more resources towards these uh, facilities that have been developed by the urban poor uh, over the years. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. And a quick one again before you go. Um, how is conflict in decision making managed within your, you know, your intervention within your program? Do communities vote by consensus or do they have voting rights? This is a question that was asked for all speakers, but I thought since you're speaking before I let you go, maybe you might answer that for us. How does it work in Zim? In terms of for arriving at consensus, the, the manner in which decisions are made is it's through the savings group that are at the local level that I talked about earlier. This is where the decision-making process happens. And this is where the issues, the challenges that I've been talking about are at. 
So the fact that these are communities that are meeting regular on a routine basis, that element or that mechanism also helps in terms of generating consensus around priorities. That is, we, we do want a, a communal water point, for example. We want a water and sanitation a, a facility here in our settlement. So working together enables or builds the needed social cohesion that helps generating much needed consensus around the priorities for the fund. Thank you.